and welcome to another edition of Diaspora Network, where we celebrate Nigerians who are making the country proud in different parts of the world. On the show today, we focus on the grass to gray stories of Nigerians who started out with little, but then turned their little into so much. Our special report spotlights the journey of Nigerians every day who migrate abroad and achieve success by dint of hard work and the indefatigable Nigerian spirit. And of course, you don't want to miss our chat with Comfort Babatunde, a Nigerian in Dubai who morphed from waitress to CEO in four short years. There's so much to watch out for in the next 30 minutes. But first, let's take a look at the news this week. Nigerian-born Victoria Oluboyo has made history by becoming the first black African city councillor in Parma, Italy. The 29-year-old studied law at the University of Parma and later joined the government as a civil servant in 2019, before becoming an immigration administrative assistant. In her new role, Victoria says her mission is to protect human rights, fight against racism, as well as tackle all forms of discrimination facing ordinary people. Speaking on her success, she says that nowadays it is essential to have the courage to talk about social and civil issues. And as a black woman who has dealt with several cases of discrimination due to gender and racism, it is of vital importance to provide a concrete representation to all the voices which have remained unheard in that region. Um, 11-year-old like author Chidera Igwe has become a recipient of the Black Excellence Award in honour of the release of her book, The Carnival Boy. The horror novel tells the story of teenager Melissa Edwards, who runs into trouble while on holiday with her family. Following an escape from their hotel room, she finds out what's hidden behind the doors of a nearby abandoned building. She then switches bodies with a young boy and now finds herself in need of saving. At the awards ceremony in Saskatchewan, Canada, the organisers highlighted the importance of celebrating young black achievements, adding that Chidera is an example of the roundedness and complexities of young black women who are pursuing their dreams and talents. Chidera says that her goal is to write two more novels, including a sequel to Carnival Boy. The English team, Whole City Football Club, have announced their scholar team ahead of next season, which includes Italian-Nigerian defender Anthony Ono who has been signed to a two-year scholarship with the academy. The 17-year-old joined Hull City at the under-14s level and he was offered a scholarship following his impressive skills in the under-15 and under-16 teams. Despite being born in Italy, Anthony is also eligible to compete in the Nigerian national team through his father's heritage. Now that he has attained a scholarship, his goal is to impress the under-18 coaches so that he can get signed for a long-term contract under the Premier League's Professional Development League programme. The Nigerian animation Ianu, Child of Wonder, has been greenlit for distribution by global content giants HBO Max, Cartoon Network and black-owned studio Lion Forge Animation. Based on the 2017 novel by author Roye Okukwe, it is a coming-of-age superhero tale rooted in Nigeria's vibrant culture, music and mythology and is set in Yoruba land, which is described as a magical kingdom. Through discovering her divine powers, the protagonist, Ianu, sets out to discover the truth about her past, her parents and her ultimate destiny to save the world. The distribution has been fueled by the need to reflect more diversity amongst minority audiences, as well as showcasing the humanity of African children in a never-before-seen way. Now that it has been adapted to the silver screen, Okukwe will be writing and directing multiple episodes. A series release date is yet to be announced. Juliana Olayinka with the Diaspora Network News Wrap in London. We caught up with the activities of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission as the organization continues to engage citizens for development. Let's take a look. As part of efforts to collectively harness the potential of a growing Nigerian population in Canada for the benefit of both countries, the Canadian High Commissioner to Nigeria, Mr. James Christophe, is paying a visit to the chairman of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Mrs. Abike Dabri Yerewa, in Abuja. Mr. Christophe describes the overall contribution of the Nigerian community in Canada as commendable. The mandate of 
of the Diaspora Commission, but you know, more importantly in this case, um, the growing and impressive uh, Nigerian diaspora in Canada, mm -hmm. and uh, where we can work to take to collectively harness, I think, the good energy that's there to the benefit of both countries. And so we had a very good discussion this morning about ways we can do that. And I look forward to, uh, to working with, uh, with the chair over the coming months uh, to do what we can to, to uh, really bring a, a light to um, a very important part of Canada's overall cultural mosaic. I mean, we're a country of immigrants. Uh, but the Nigerian community is taking up its own place in Canada, really contributing in all aspects of our, uh, of our society, um, economically, of course, but culturally and socially. Uh, so it's a very important part of our country and uh, one of the reasons why I want to pay a, a call this morning. So. On her part, the NIDCOM boss applauds Nigerians in Canada and encourages them to be actively involved in investments back home. We're proud of the Canadian Nigerians and they are really doing great things here. They're investing in businesses. We participate a lot in all our programs, the diaspora investment summits. We were involved in the setting up the diaspora investment trust fund and a whole lot of things that we do back here. And we're also working hard to engage the younger generation of Nigerians in Canada. I know we have a lot of students there and um, they all have great things to tell. But the key thing is, how do you engage wherever you are, whether you're at home or at home? So with the Canadian population, and also in terms of our art, creative industry, there's so much partnership that can happen between the creative industry, the music, the uh, Bollywood, as well as Canada, because I know that you have a lot of infrastructure for that in Canada. And we look forward to further engagement with you and continuous engagement with our diaspora community in Canada, and we really are proud of what they are doing. At another meeting, this time at the office of the Executive Secretary, Tertiary Education Trust Fund, Mr. Sonia Chono in Abuja, the aim is to discuss ways for the Commission to grow its partnership with TED Fund for development in the education sector. Mr. Sonia Chono says TED Fund is willing to fund education centers and facilities for Nigerians in diaspora to feel comfortable to use and to promote the exploits of the Nigerian diaspora community. He also commends the NITCOM boss for her laudable efforts in diaspora matters. We will work extensively with um, the other stakeholders, particularly with NUC, to see how we grow that partnership in the education sector. And we expect any Nigerian that is out there, you see something good, you see advancement, you see modernization, you see innovation. The first thing that should occur to you is how do I take this back? To my country so I can also create similar conditions or similar benefit stream for my people. And as long as we have Nigerians who are out there doing just that, we pledge that we will find ways and bridges to reach them and communicate with them and also bring them to come and contribute their quota to our national development. The issue of migration and its impact is also brought to the front burner. Talk about brain circulation. You know, we, we talk about brain drain, brain gain, but we now focus on brain circulation, which is what is happening. So, you can't stop people from migrating, but at the end of the day, it's still an advantage back home. There's huge, there's so much we can do with the diaspora, and we look forward to achieving that with your partnership, with your cooperation. Are you a Nigerian in diaspora? Do you have a need to contact Nigerians in Diaspora Commission? NITCOM, kindly dial any of the numbers on your screen. You can also catch up with all the Commission's activities including news, articles and office events on the website nitcom.gov.ng. Well, for many people, migrating abroad seems to hold the promise of the good life. But how do everyday Nigerians achieve success outside our shores? Our findings are interesting. For as long as historians can record, humans have been on the move. It's part of life and the study of civilization will be incomplete without the tracing of migrant groups and populations. While some migrate in search of better opportunities, others do so for educational, health care, safety and security purposes. Security. Today, 
the number of people who live in a country other than one in which they were born has risen sharply. According to a 2020 report by the International Organization for Migration, the number of international migrants was estimated to be about 281 million globally, a figure that is over 50 million more than it was a decade ago. While many individuals migrate by choice, many others do so out of necessity. In Africa, Nigerians are ranked one of the largest immigrant populations as thousands migrate every year to different countries. A 2020 study conducted by Africa Polling Institute shows that the most popular destination for Nigerian migrants is Canada, followed by the United States and the United Kingdom. Others include Australia, Germany, Spain, Italy, and South Africa. This movement of people across international borders for the purpose of settlements comes with a positive and negative impacts for both the host and donor countries. Some of the foremost effects include development, low-cost labor, stricter immigration policies, and increased remittances. In this regard, the Nigerian government recently recorded an all-time high in its diaspora remittances which according to the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission now stands at $20 billion. But the price for this feat is brain drain in numerous sectors and industries. For this reason, experts recommend strategies on the part of government to stem the tide by addressing push factors like unemployment, security and pull factors such as job opportunities, wealth prospects, better conditions of service and higher standards of living. On a positive note, some migrants return to their country with improved skills, while many others fly the country's flag in their area of expertise, gaining worldwide recognition and making waves in different spheres of endeavor. Their influence is evident in sports, music, literature, movies, and many other sectors. 11-year-old Tani Tuluwa Adeomi and his family fled unrest in a specific part of Nigeria and ended up in a homeless shelter in New York. He learned the game of chess, and in about a year after arriving the country, he's changed his entire family's fortune. The young Nigerian immigrant proved that hard work pays by winning the New York State Scholastic Primary Championship for his age category in 2019. Another story that demonstrates the Nigerian can-do spirit is that of a Kwaibom state-born Ufot Ekong, who is based in Tokyo. He broke a 50-year-old academic record in Takai University, Japan. He also solved the mathematical puzzle, which remained unsolved for 30 years. Ekong won six awards for academic excellence, despite maintaining two jobs alongside his studies so as to pay his way as a student. Apart from those who are celebrated publicly, there are ordinary Nigerians who've migrated and have achieved success. In the last three years in particular, there's been an uptick in the number of people eager to leave the country, a trend that is known as Jakba in local parlance. And here are the statistics to back this up. The Africa Polling Institute shows that as of 2021, 7 out of 10 Nigerians, including male and female, polled in different states were willing to leave the country if given the opportunity, which raises the question, are the streets abroad really paved with gold? To Jakba or not to Jakba? That is the question. While millions of people relocate every year in search of a better life, some emigrants soon found out that the proverbial streets overseas may be paved with precious metal, but it takes a lot of hard work to strike gold. Now that is something to think about. Diaspora Network is all about Nigerians doing brilliant things in various sectors. But it's also about everyday Nigerians who achieve success even when the odds are against them. Here's the story of how this waitress became a CEO. This is Comfort Babatunde. Looking at her now, it's hard to tell that this CEO from Kogi State, North Central Nigeria, was once a maid. Her grass to grey story begins from Federal Government College Kwali in Abuja, Nigeria's capital, where she completed her secondary education. She then proceeded to Federal Polytechnic Bida in Niger State, where she obtained a diploma in Secretarial Studies and Office Management. She also has a bachelor's degree in International Peace and Conflict Resolution from the National Open University of Nigeria. In 2018, Comfort relocated to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates to pursue her ambition of becoming a successful entrepreneur. And not despising small beginnings, she got a job as a housekeeper and later a waitress. 
The Nigerian spirit of dignity in labor was apparent to her bosses, and over a two-year period, she received glowing recommendations. With what she saved up, she delved into real estate and brokered several acquisitions for her clients. Today, she has established her beauty business by Comfort Hair and a beauty line, as well as a food and delivery service that has become extremely popular in Dubai. Coming up on Diaspora Network, our chat with Comfort Babatunde, a Nigerian entrepreneur and the CEO of By Comfort Salon. Welcome back to the program. We had a chat with a young Nigerian lady who's done very well in Dubai, although she left with little besides her great attitude, strong work ethic, and of course, zeal to succeed. Although she was born into a mid-class family in Kaduna, Northwest Nigeria, Comfort was determined to make it big as an entrepreneur. Hello, everybody. Growing up was more like, um, I can remember what my dad used to tell me about you. He'd be like, I don't have anything more to give you guys that the basic foundation of you guys, which is the school. You know, the whole educational aspect of the whole thing and whatever advice I can give, the rest is up to you. And to be honest, who are we keeping? The rest is actually up to us. If there's just one thing I knew, like if I could take my, my, my mind back, I just know I kept saying something like that. I just know I wanted my own thing. Irrespective of how it started, I just know that I just wanted my own thing. I wanted to be my own girl. I wanted to be my own thing. More like the whole entrepreneurial independent spirit, which to be honest, my mother would tell you I'm really stubborn. I would like I'm always used to getting exactly what I want, except if I'm not interested in it. But as long as my mind is like okay, fixated on that thing, I want it. Honest, she can sell because my father is a civil engineer. He was a civil engineer, I'm so rest in He was a civil engineer, and my mother likes sectoral study that, but an entrepreneur to the core. But the journey to bringing her dream to reality was not an easy one. I sell me clothes. Um, fairly useful I'll go to the market. There's this market in Kalichi, Abuja. You know, I go there buy for the guy brings it for like she brings it like a whole lot of um, big bills. So I'll go, I'll pick some, then I'll you know select the good ones, then come back, sell it to the friends. I'll be like, you know, after you after you the whole laundry I can good ones we sell at my money like that. Then on the side I was like, okay, because I've always wanted like I don't know, there's something about food. <laughs> I sold food in the car park. But the problem was the whole um, government ish. I had serious problems with tax costs over and over again. Like, I could barely have my tables. I want my business run for two months without having tax costs coming to it again. Like, sometimes you come and just realize the level to go with. For no reason, you're asking everything wrong. And now you're thinking, where do I start from? Before you go, know, I'm going to my sister's office or I'm going to friends or like, that I not money, go in whichever one I can go in, check whatever cities I have, I'm starting again. Before you go, know, I went from car park to mechanic villages, selling food. Still, we still had the same issue of tax costs. Then I was like, okay, enough was enough. Then I started from my house, I started selling money. money. So then I had like uh, two staff, and uh, there's one person that would come and wash the bills, and me and one other woman. So at that time, we always, as a, in a deal, we make like a thousand, one thousand five piece of my money. Then after that, we have people that will come and pick, count, 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 pay, go to the allocation to sell. Even me at the end of the day, after we we'll take a shower, pick my own pocket, is that I'm going to the plaza. Or I think if I was talking about, I want to be some people that would actually want to see that people would remember because I'm like, I'm all dressed up with my. Well, you know, with I remember that woman, yeah, when I was like with the bucket, go to Plaza Emma, like selling moi moi and all that. My mother's younger brother to be precise, actually. He's in Dubai. He's been here for like uh, years, I think more than 10 years, if I'm not mistaken. I remember one time I called him like, Uncle, oh, you know, when bills are private, like, and I did not want to, you know, disturb my elder ones or my mom or anybody I'm like that. Uh, okay, it's been a long time, it's not like I've called you before, like, what's up now? Is anything you can be done for you? You know, you're not alone. 
And I remember what he told me. He said he's not going to send the money. And I'm like, ah, I'll go right now, whatever. And he was like, um, if you need a job, let me know. But I don't have any money to do. So, but if you feel like if you want to come to the bar or something, why not come? Maybe you can find me a job or something to do instead of you. Because I heard you've been doing all these other things and it's not working. So why not you change the bar right and apply? Ah, okay, so I'll think about it. And that was it. I did not call him again. And then the business suffered a major setback. I brought 10,000 naira from a friend that collected it from her contribution. Because I just got this place. And I'm like, I was so excited about this because it was in the plaza. And they told me, no, they don't usually have issues with, you know, task force and all that. Says, the first thing, after the capital had gone to make the batches, had done, got to make tables, got to mount the canopy, the day we resumed, the day we started, like we should start working that day, they came. With the coolers, with the tables, with the food. In that moment, she knew she needed a fresh start. But even what she thought was a new path to success turned out to be another bumpy ride. The week I got in, they found out that there was an embargo on employment in the hotel. So which means at that time, they were not employed. And I came with a month visa. So after the first week, the second week, I noticed he was just, he was really not comfortable because he doesn't know how to talk, he did not even know how to tell me or something. I'm like, uncle, so what are we going to do? So he was like, yeah, that's what he's even wanting, like, he doesn't know how to tell me. I'm like, what? He said, hmm. so that one month visa is uh, expiring, he doesn't want a situation where I'll be here and, you know, overstay. And I'm like, what's on the table? He was like, he's not sure I'll be able to do it. I'm like, uncle, I left for a reason and there's no way I'm going back. So, Whatever it is, tell me. At least, if I don't know, how would you even, how would you even if I don't know? Then he was like, it's housekeeping. And I'm like, so? And he was like, really? He said, it's not like that kind of housekeeping that you just come and you think you just want to see. I'm like, at least you know, somebody to train you, right? He said, yes. A profession where I have to be laying and washing toilets and laying beds about 15 rooms a day. As a 15, 16 rooms a day sometimes in events. And now, you know, I have to bend, lay the beds, bend, scrub. And it's not like something I'm like, kind of used to, the whole physical. So I started having like a little bit of back issues. So then I called my uncle and I'm like, um, I'm not saying I can't do this job, but it's more like um, I think this thing is a contract like, because most of the time when I stand up at night, you know, it's. And I don't want to switch over. I'm the one looking for something at the end of the day. I'll end up getting it to treat my health later. That doesn't make any sense. So we, he was like, I should just be patient for a while. Then we went on back and forth. So after I spent like three months in housekeeping, then one of the hotels had like a vacancy for waitress. So he now called me like, okay, there's waitress. And I'm like, ah, okay, why not? He said, are you sure? I said, ah. He said, <laughs> I said, bro, I'm sure. Before I left um, the housekeeping job, because normally if you sign a contract with a hotel, the contract is for two years. So which means they make your visa, they make your residence, they make everything. Which means they pay for it, right? So now, and I'm just living, it's not even up to six months. So which means I needed to pay them for them to cancel my visa so I could resume the other job. I need to pay them 6,000 dollars. That's around almost like a million in America. I did not have that money, honestly. I did not have it at that time. But I know I needed to be. That was when the phone call started. Then I started calling my mom, I called my sisters, I called my brothers, I called my friends. Somehow, everybody came to like back and forth. Even the ones I had to go for, that even like when I resumed my job, I would you know pay them like every month. The willingness and determination to achieve success is what kept her grounded. Comfort story demonstrates the Nigerian can-do spirit, one that birthed three businesses in the UAE less than five years after she arrived in Dubai. Which was in 2018, 2019. I was done. Then, uh, EHS season started um, 2019, 
And here's her advice for people starting out in a new country. Aside coming in with a plan, sometimes you just have to just come in. If you know you're not there as it is, come, see how it is, ask questions, network, meet people. Like me, it, like I can ask questions for you. Like my friends will tell you, comfort. If there are two things I can do here, I can shalaye, that's this Nigerian word. Like I know how to explain for that boy instead of just sitting there. And at the same time, I am as like never feel too big to ask questions or to apologize or to be like, I don't know this. Thing. Please tell me. In fact, as good as if there are some words you use in English, I'd be like, sorry, what does that mean? Like, what does it mean? Like, I will ask because I want to know. But not the problem is some people, it's not like the candidates do. Some people don't have the patience. Some people feel they are too big, especially for the ones that want to work. Or they feel like, okay, there's a job available. It's not like the job is available. Some people are too big, too big to work. But some people are telling you, okay, they tell like the salary is too small. Well, that's an impactful story of resilience and focus. Comfort's narrative mirrors that of many Nigerians who work hard daily to break the cycle of failure to achieve success. Sometimes where people start may not be as important as where they end up. And that's it on the show. You can catch all editions of Diaspora Network on our website, channelstv.com. I'm Ijoma Onyato. See you next time. <laughs>